So supplementing Dao diamine oxidase is a common recommendation that I see for histamine intolerance. And I feel very strongly that it is not a solution for this condition. So let me explain that a little bit in this video. For the majority of people that I work with supplementing enzymes, you know, whether that's, you know, Dao, you know, histamine intolerance, enzyme supplementation, whether that's things like pancreatin for pancreatic insufficiency, I look at them as band-aids and I also look at them as something that can prove whether we're on the right track or not and Dow supplementation is a really kind of huge kind of insight here an example of what that means because you can have this might be news to some of you people or some of you might be living it right now saying like Dow doesn't do a darn thing for me but I am definitely histamine intolerant um, Dow enzyme supplementation can really, really improve symptoms uh, with histamine and it can do absolutely nothing for certain patients. And the insight that that tells me, again, I'd use the test as the treatment. That's a really kind of common theme in my practice. Sometimes you have no idea what's going on and we use treatments to confirm whether, you know, we're onto something, whether we've got a kind of grip on what's driving your symptoms. And from there, we springboard into root cause treatments. So if you are supplementing with Dow and you are seeing improvements in your symptoms, to me that ticks the column of digestive dysregulation. It tells me that most likely the gut is at least one of those strong vector sources that is leading to your histamine buildup, histamine overload, histamine symptoms, whether that's migraines, headaches, vertigo, dizziness, clogged sinuses, heart arrhythmias, abnormal menstrual cycles, whatever it is, histamine is the you know elephant in the room it's the driver and then the big question is where is it all coming from so first off what does diamine oxidase do it is the extracellular enzyme that degrades histamine what does that mean big story short uh, Dow breaks down histamine outside of the cells when you're looking inside of the cells, what breaks down histamine? It's a whole different pathway and that runs on a methylation enzyme. It's an enzyme that uses the universal methyl donor, SAMe, um, to break down histamine. And it's called uh, histamine N-methyltransferase, H-N-M-T. We're forgetting about that right now because we are supplementing Dow. I'm assuming this is you and you're seeing benefit with your histamine symptoms. If you don't, again, I start to rule out gut as a big driver. It's not always the case, but it's a good way to kind of triage towards the other vector sources. Dow is helping in this case, you know, this example, this imaginary case we're talking about, I've got a million we could pull from, but let's keep it uh, theoretical. Dow is helping. That tells me that the gut is involved. Why? Extracellular histamine breakdown. Dow is mainly, most notably, it's made in a couple other places, but it's most notably made in the small bowel. And what breaks down or degrades or down regulates diamine oxidase? The first thing, the most notable thing, the thing that I see all the time is gut inflammation and gut damage, right? And so what are all the things that lead to leaky gut? Right, leaky gets a symptom, it's a downstream presentation, there's something upstream that's leading to that. If we're talking about, you know, kind of classic gut presentations, bloating, gas, that, you know, bowel movement changes, abdominal pain, um, distension, I'd be looking at things like SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, remember small bowel, the, uh, the Dow enzymes made in the small bowel, damage to the small bowel, CFO, small intestinal fungal overgrowth, that is a huge, huge piece that I see all the time. And then, you know, even things like large bowel dysbiosis can impact the, um, you know, the small bowel in, in different ways, most notably like inflammation. And so inflammation will lead to um, a down regulation of diamine production. 
damage to the gut lining is going to lead to less DAO. And then when you supplement DAO, you know, as a supplement, you see benefit. It's basically just replacing that DAO that has been, you know, lost through the gut damage piece. So there are other things that would lead to low DAO. There'd be things like nutrient deficiencies, genetics are a big thing, excessive alcohol intake can definitely lead to, um, you know, less DAO, um, hormonal imbalances, you know, there's so many other things. But but with a presentation of gut dysfunction, um, I would be looking at damage to the small bowel as the major vector source, the major driver of the histamine intolerance when Dao is helpful. So we're imagining this person, they're coming to me, they're like, I'm taking diamine oxidase as a supplement, there's a million kind of different products on the, uh, you know, interwebs, they're all very expensive, they're like, you know, I can't justify it, I want to get off it, I want to be able to break down histamine um, on my own without kind of supplementing with enzymes, there's something wrong. I've also got a bunch of other gut kind of issues going on. I would be considering a range of tests. I wouldn't do them all. I'd actually pick one, you know, maybe two max. And I would use things like symptoms to guide testing recommendations. Top of the pile, if there is bloating and distension and gas, particularly if it's quite quick after, you know, food intake, after a meal. Um, if within like an hour or less, some people say, look, within five, 10 minutes, I go from a flat tummy, feeling good, I wake up, I have my morning, you know, I have my breakfast and I'm bloated, I'm gassy, I've got abdominal pain, I gotta run to the bathroom to have a bowel movement within five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I'm thinking small bowel. Could be the stomach, definitely it's worth ruling it out. That's less common, so I wanna jump straight for you know the most common drivers. And if it's not SIBO, if the breath test is negative, I would be considering a uh, fungal overgrowth there as a, uh, a second possibility. Again, history of antibiotics. When did things go wrong? How quickly you know did things go wrong after things like antibiotics? You might say, look, it might be more fungal. Then we go for more of like an organic acids test to rule in or rule out a fungal overgrowth. If they have more of like a delayed presentation or they have a SIBO breath test, it's positive, but they still can't get off the Dow and they can't resolve the SIBO, we might look a little bit bigger on the picture and look at a, an advanced stool test for um, you know, bacterial dysbiosis, leaky gut, that would be elevated zonulin, inflammation, that'd be calprotectin. There's a few other kind of nuanced pieces around inflammation on stool testing. They look for fungal overgrowths. They rarely find them. Doesn't mean they're not there. That is a huge pearl. If you have an uh, advanced stool test that says you do not have a fungal overgrowth, don't rule it out. Oh, testing is the only reliable way to test for fungal overgrowth, in my humble opinion. Um, and then other big pieces with uh, stool testing, they're looking for things like parasites, that's quite common. Butyrate, short chain fatty acid balances. How robustly are you producing uh, pancreatic enzymes? There's this whole big long story around pancreatic enzyme um, insufficiency. Uh, again, I've done a video on that, you can check it out. But if you do have lab low um, elastase one or pancreatic elastase showing that your pancreas is not producing enough enzymes, a lot of gastros and doctors will start looking at the pancreas as the problem definitely worth ruling that out, right? Is it pancreatic cancer? Is it pancreatitis? Is there something sinister going on? Is there some organ damage going on? I haven't seen that. I don't think I've seen that once and a bunch of people have been assessed. I would be looking at the gut damage as the driver and the lack of that cue to release enzymes from the pancreas there. So you'll see all that on an advanced stool test and that can all help drill down into what is driving your need for the Dow enzyme 
to support your histamine intolerance. Now the last lab, and this is a lab that I don't use a whole lot anymore, I might use it as like a standalone or I might use it to kind of um, get some insight into how treatment is progressing. But I used to order the, uh, you know, the leaky gut panel, the lactulose mannitol intestinal permeability gold standard urine test to see kind of how permeable that gut lining is. Now I just rely on zonulin on stool testing mainly. That's a really big one that I'll kind of focus on. I'll rely on symptoms and that's more of a cost thing, right? Like if these tests were cheap or if money grew on trees, money was no object, like 99% of my patients would have a SIBO breath test, they'd have an organic acid test, and they'd have an advanced functional stool test, preferably DNA based. I could do most of my job with those three um, you know, bits of information that that will give me. And a lot of that, again, we have to be a bit choosy because that would rack up you know, about a grand worth of uh, testing. You know, more often than not, we'll just put, cho choose sorry, one of those three labs to um, guide treatment. That's enough for the vast majority of patients that I work with. So from there, we take the lab results. Are you SIBO positive? Is it fungal positive? Do you have gut damage? We look to resolve head on those issues. You can keep supplementing diamine oxidase, no problem. You know, if it's helpful, keep it up. Um, we're looking to get you off that. Remember, it's a Band-Aid when we can and let your um, you know, own endogenous DAO break down histamines. You don't have to supplement. You don't have to spend that money. Treat it head on. I prefer to, it doesn't happen all the time, but I prefer to treat the reason for the gut damage first. And then once that's resolved and people are feeling better, then we can go into a gentle gut healing protocol. And so really, really top recommendations there. Uh, I keep it pretty simple with leaky gut. Again, once you've resolved the reason you have leaky gut, Treating leaky gut tends to be quite easy to do. There are a few notable cases where their you know, intestinal permeability has persisted. And we're just kind of scratching our head wondering why and we have to kind of keep digging deeper and deeper until we find that piece that's causing the leaky gut. But for the vast majority of patients, I'm hoping this is you, you deal with the reason why you have leaky gut in the first place. With my patient population, it's often some microbial imbalance that's damaging the gut lining, and then roll in with a lot of the frontline therapies that I'm sure you've heard of. Glutamine's a top one. I really like enzyme supplementation when we are working on gut lining. I supplement with uh, serum-derived immunoglobulins or colostrum. Those are all really, really big pieces. Prebiotics, probiotics, postbiotics, butyrate, stand out, stand out, large bowel leaky gut support, vitamin D, quercetin, vitamin A, demulcent herbs. You know, that's a whole big long list, but you know, if you look at most quality supplement brands here in Australia, every top tier supplement brand is going to have their gut healing powders. Curcumin, turmeric is another really fantastic uh, anti-inflammatory gut healing um, you know, herb as well. Um, I've got my favorite ones. I really like GI Revive by Designs for Health. There's a few other really good ones. Gut R by Orthoplex if someone's a little bit more sensitive and just wants the nutrients to heal the gut lining. But I am really flexible on that approach because one product you're going to find the same ingredients in you know a dozen other products that are on the market and i don't really think there's anything kind of too notable except the serum derived immunoglobulins so here in australia that's iggi shield by designs for health and overseas there's the uh, mega igg those are the two kind of notable brands there love that product use it all the time see really really big benefit from it and then if you're someone that tolerates dairy, then uh, colostrum would have a lot of the similar impacts, similar properties with a little bit more going on in it as well. Most of my patients, you know, when they're going through this process, we want to minimize things they might react to. So I don't typically recommend a dairy product like colostrum. 
unless they know they can tolerate it and they're ready for some more functional food rather than like direct kind of supplemental therapies. So I hope that helped. It was a bit of a ramble at the end, but if it was helpful, remember to hit the like button, subscribe, that helps me grow the channel. And if you are looking for help with histamine intolerance or gut dysfunction, you're living in Australia or New Zealand, then there will be a booking link in the description below. Thanks for watching.